Hi, welcome back. We're going to learn today how to do a PDF interactive. So we're going to use this file and you can download it from the link just below the video. Remember, pause the video. I'll be here waiting for you. Ready? Let's go. Once you open it, if you have trouble with the fonts, don't worry. Remember that you can replace them. Actually, the software is going to look for them and it's going to auto install the fonts in case you don't have them. In case it takes more time, don't panic. Remember that this is an exercise and you already know how to replace a font. Let's continue. We're going to learn how to do a PDF interactive. Remember that the first step is to define the workspace that we're going to use. So let's go to the top menu. In my case, I have Brenda Video's workspace, Essential Classic. But as we're going to learn how to do hyperlinks, buttons, and other stuff related with animation, let's select this Digital Polish. Once you have selected Digital Polishing, you're going to find out that you have different uh, panels that are going to be really useful for you to understand how to create an animation, especially for PDF. Let's take a look to the file that we already have. Let's go to the menu and select Pages. And as we can see, we have 12 pages. Let's take a look to all of them. I'm going to do it with you. Page 1, page 2, and so on. Now, as you can see, all of them are placed individually. And if you want to take a look to all the pages, like a spread, it's really easy. Let's go to the top menu, File, then select Document Setup. And remember, click right this box, and you're going to see the change right here. So this is going to help you if you want to have spreads or if you want to have individual pages. For me and for the exercise, it's going to be easier to show this like a spread, okay? Now, let me reduce and zoom out what we have right here. I'm going to close the pages, the panel pages, and let's see what we have. As we're going to do an interactive PDF, maybe we're going to help the user to move along all the document. Where are you going to put all the information and buttons? Well, on the first page. Depending on your design is how you're going to manage and how you're going to do your proposal, okay? So I'm going to the first page. Remember, common zero if you want to have the complete view of the page. We have animation, and this is important for me to tell you. Animation is going to work with EPUBs or um, electronic publications, not exactly with PDF. We're going to learn this um, next week if I'm not wrong. Timing is related with animation, so these two are not going to be learned today. Media is going to be for animation too, and what are we going to learn today? Buttons, hyperlinks. So let me close this one, and let's click right here where it says buttons. You are allowed to create buttons. There are different styles, and even the software is going to give some examples and some templates that are going to make it easier for you. So let's see. Come to the corner, click, and you're going to find this new window or panel. You're going to find the sample buttons and forms that are commonly used on InDesign. If you want to create your own, of course, we're going to learn how to do it, in case you don't like the ones that we have as a proposal in InDesign. But I'm going to show you one of them, because for me it's important that you understand how to get them for free and how to do it easily. So please select one of the following buttons, just the ones where I'm moving. I'm going to select the blue one, and I'm going to hold it, drag it, and release it on the first page. I'm going to close this one, and I'm going to place it right here at the middle. When you have a button, you can define the action that you want for this button. For example, if you want to send an email, if you want to go to a specific web page, or maybe you want um, to open another document, or think about all the options that you can do with a button. So, on the panel of the buttons, you're going to find out if you click where it says type, 
that you have for PDF all these options, okay? Automatically, the software is telling you that for PDF, you can use only the ones that you have right here. So I'm going to release it right there. Then name, I'm going to write down web page because I'm going to use it to as a hyperlink for our web page. Remember to name all the buttons because it's going to be easy to find and define what do you want to do with each button. Event, event is what you want to do uh, with the button. For example, if you want people um, to have a function when you release and tap, on click, rollover is going to do, be when you pass the mouse over it, roll off is when you get out, on focus and on blur if, if, in case you want, for example, a special effect. For this example, I'm going to select on release or tap. Now actions, this um, button, as it was already defined by Adobe InDesign, it has this action, okay? It says you have to go to a specific website. But if you click where it says actions, you're going to find out that there are different options that you can do in PDF. Even the software is telling you, hey, animations and all of this you are not allowed to do. And we have this one, clear form, go to next view, previous view, open file, print form, and so on. So what are we going to do? We are going right now to keep it like go to URL and instead of writing down this, please write down with me www.discoverboating.com. As you can see, it's a real web page and when you click it, it's going to send you to that web page. Now, when we see normal rollover and click, this is telling me if the color of the um, button is going to change. For example, normal is how it's going to look when you pass over it or when you click it. If you want to change, for example, the color of this button, you can do it. Click it, please, double click it, and you're going to find out at the top that it has blue color, correct? Change the color to the one that you prefer. I'm going to select a lighter color because I, I prefer to combine it into dark and unclear colors, okay? So, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep it here. So, normal, it changed a little bit, correct? Now, you want, um, if you want to be hidden until triggered, you can check this box, but the ideal thing is to have it as an option, right? Like everyone can see it really easy. And the PDF options, try to open it so you can take a look at what's going on. It's going to give you this option that you can print it. For example, when people receive this file, they're going to open it in Acrobat Reader. So think about them. If they want to print it, they are going to have the opportunity to do it. If you don't want them to print it, just uncheck the box. I'm going to keep it. And what else do we have right here? This one is to delete the button. And this one is to have a preview of what you're doing. Please click it. So this is what people is going to take a look. They're going to see this. And you see the, the, the hand that appears is telling me that you have an action. Okay, so people, when they click it here, automatically they're going to open a website that we already wrote right here. This is really good to have it open because you're going to be able to have a preview. So in case um, you don't find it, remember that you can find it right here just at the bottom, or you can go to the top menu, select window, interactive, and here you're going to find all the options that we have for ePoofs, okay? Here you're going to find ePoof interactive preview, just in case you don't see it and you want to do it the long way. What else can we do? Buttons can have this shape, or you can create your own button. How can we create our own button? Well, let's draw. We already know how to create figures. We can create shapes. For example, we can import something from Illustrator too. And as we're going to do this um, uh, really practical and easy exercise, we're going to do it with this. I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to select a color for it, maybe black, okay? 
Remember that we already learned how to create special effects? Well, I'm going to apply some effects on this one. You can do it by properties window, window, properties. I'm going to close this one so you can see it. And with the property windows, I'm going to apply a special effect, bevel and emboss. And as you can see, I'm going to get closer so you can take a look to it. It's given like this appearance, like being with volume, okay? Bevel and emboss, without bevel and emboss, with bevel and emboss. If you have the preview box right here, it's going to be easier for you to find out what's going on. And depending on the memory RAM that you have in your computer, you're going to take a look to it. You can apply drop shadow. I'm going to apply drop shadow. So I have this one that is going to be the button and it's going to help me to bring people to page maybe number two. So I'm going to write down right here. Remember that we're working with frames two. I'm going to select white color or paper. I'm going to change the size of it. I'm going to align it to the middle and probably I'm going to adapt it. Let's see, maybe I want to still change in the size of it. I believe it works better like this. So I have this and it's a frame and it's a text. It has both um, information, right? So what I'm going to do right now I'm coming to the um, buttons. I already closed it, sorry. I'm going to open it right now. Here it is. I have to select first the object or the frame. Then where it says type, I'm going to select it and I'm going to convert it into a button, okay? This is one way. Of course, I'm going to show you more ways. So I'm going to name it and I'm going to write down um, page two. What I want is on click. When people click on it, they are going to next page because this is page number one, right? And I want it like this. And if I want to take a look that it's already working, you see the hand, you see the hand. Perfect. Now let's go again. So I have this button that is going to take me to a specific hyperlink. And this one is going to take me to the next page. Okay, so I'm going to place it right here. So I wrote a text. I draw a frame or a box that is containing the text. Okay, let's continue. How about if I want, for example, this word to be a hyper hyperlink or has a specific function? Let's see, I'm going to put this one here and I'm going to select the one that says hyperlink. People can click this area or can click the button just below. Let's write down again, www.discoverboating.com. Once you have it like this, it's the same one that we have right here just below. Select the first one. It's okay. It's telling you in what page do you have it. And it has a special quality. What a special quality? Before it was white and now it is blue. If you want to change the color, you can do it. For example, you can come to the top and say, hey, I don't want it in blue. I want it in white or red or pink, the color that you prefer. This number is telling you where do you have like the source. And this one is telling you that is green, that is okay. You are allowed to do it and you have written it properly. What is this is to refresh. And this one is in case you want to create a new hyperlink. If you are not so sure about it, you have to select it and then press the delete select hyperlink. Okay. So we already know how to write a hyperlink, a button with a hyperlink. And this is a specific button with an spe a specific action. Now let's go here. How about if we want to add some buttons on the other pages? Let's go with that. Let me come here and I'm going to put number two because I want to put number two. Okay. But you can write down 
I don't know, a thanks page or draw an icon. Page number two is the thanks page, you know, thank you. This, remember that this is Lauren Ipsum, okay? This is not the real text. Now, what can you do? For example, we can come here and you can draw some triangles to make people easy to, to make them easily to move through the document. So I'm going to draw a triangle. The icon that you select is important. For me right now, I'm doing the triangle because it's easy to draw. But when you are doing a design, you have to think more about it, okay? So I'm going to create this one. This one is going to take me to the previous page. And this one is going to take me to the next page. As you can see, the only thing I made is like, I duplicate it with option and then I rotate it. I'm going to select the first one. I'm coming to the buttons panel. I'm going to convert it into a button. I'm going to name it as back because this one is going to take me back. When people pass over it, the action is going, for example, go to previous page. And that's it. Okay, back button. Please remember to name them. It's really important how you name your documents. Now I'm going to click this other one. I'm going to convert it into a button. Next page. I want them, um, when they roll over again, the action is going to be go to next page. Something has appeared and I haven't explained it yet. Inherit zoom, actual size, fitting window, fit visible. This one is going to make me a little bit zoom to the button or keep the actual size. I'm going to keep it in actual size so you can see the effects on what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to close this one. If I want to repeat, for example, all the buttons, what, I'm, what can I do? Well, please select the two buttons, Command C if you have a Mac, Control C if you have a PC. I'm going to paste them. I'm going to grab them and I'm going to place them right here. And I'm going to change the color of them in black. Now, let's see if they continue being a button. I'm going to select just one. And as you can see, this is the back button that is going to take me to previous page. So you can change the quality of each button in terms of color, stroke line effects, and it's going to have like the same function. I'm going to duplicate these two. At the end, I selected black because they're going to look better in white paper, correct? And maybe for the ones that I have, like pictures like this one, maybe I'm going to select white. Let's go right here. I'm going to duplicate it, pressing option. Remember that you can duplicate. In case right here, maybe this is too close. I'm going to place it over. And maybe here I'm going to use it in white. Now, I'm going to copy these two again. I'm going to put it a little bit close to the image. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to select in white for this area. I have to move it right here. I made a mistake. And what do we have right here? Well, we're not going to put any button that is going to take me to the previous, maybe to the previous and maybe to the last one, right? So I'm going to select this one. I just selected one. And right here, I'm going to draw a square. And this one is going to take me to the first page, okay? So I'm going to place it here. I'm going to apply color. I'm going to convert it into a button. This is going to take me to the first page on rollover. I want them to take me to the first page. So once I have it like this, what can we do? 
So we already know how to make buttons, okay? We can even create a button for sounds, but as Adobe is created more for printable or seen on screen, and it's not exactly like an electronic publication, we're going to learn uh, with, we do ePoofs, how to add videos and sounds, okay? This one is more for animation inside PDF files. Now let's see, let's go to the top menu. So we have this and we have this too. I don't like this too, but I'm going to maybe change it. I'm going to put it like this. <laughs> How can we save this file? Okay, first of all, you have to save it as a PDF interactive as InDesign file. So let's go to file, save as, select the area where you want to save it. I'm going to save it right here in my desktop. I'm going to replace it because I already have done it before uh, doing this video. And as I wanted to have it as a PDF, let's go where it says file, export, and instead of selecting Adobe PDF print, click right here and please select PDF interactive. Once you have it like this, click save and you're going to see that you have less options like uh, uh, we've seen in previous videos as PDF. Why? Because this is an interactive, interactive um, document, okay? You can have them as pages or as spreads, okay? I'm going to do it by spreads, so you, you're going to see two pages, okay? Viewing, you can have default. You can define, for example, only 50% or fit width and height and visible. Please keep it in default. Layout, you can select single page, single page continues to up basic. I mean, you can change, select and everything that you have right here. But most important of all, please select one of the options that we have right here. Select blinds, box, comms. You're going to find out that this is pretty cool. I'm going to select dissolve. Be sure to embed page thumbnails. This is going to keep the information of the document. Appearance only is not needed. Create tag PDF, you don't want to tag it. And create Acrobat layers. Because we haven't used the layers and um, this exercise was already made for you, you don't have any layers, correct? Now, let's go to compression. Please, on compression, get it in lossy. Quality, this is really important. If you want to have super high quality because you know everyone has iPad and Retina eye screens, well, Maximum will be the best. And what's the difference between selecting the lower or maximum? The quality of the image. Please, at least select medium, okay? And the resolution, as you're going to watch it uh, and take a look to it through a computer, a computer, and it's not going to be printed, 72 is okay. But if you're going to give the option to print, consider selecting 144. For now, I'm going to select 72. Advance, in case you want to, I don't know, people to find out that all the characteristics of the documents, please, you can keep the file name. People is going to look for it like a PDF interactive, and they already know that the language is in English. And again, if you want to save or give a specific password for helping people to open it, you can click this too. You already know how to do it, correct? Now, let's go. Remember that I have this checkbox, view after exporting. And right now it's telling me, hey, Brenda, it has cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And colors are going to be converted to RGB. Remember, if you're going to print, you are going to use cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. But as the software already knows that this is for being seen on a computer, they're going to transform the colors, okay? On this case, it's okay and it's fine. The computer is going to do the, um, all the work for me. So click OK. Automatically, it's supposed to open it in Acrobat Reader, as you can see in my computer. So if I click it right here, it's going to give me the security warning because I have like this my computer, and it's going to tell me, hey, it's going to open this web page. So if I click allow, it's going to open that web page, okay? Now, if I click right here, it's going to take me to page two. Now, as I already save it as, um, as a document with the spreads, 
you're going to find out that you are going to be able to see the two pages, okay? Remember that I defined it like to, to uh, as rollover. So let me see if I can change this view so you can take a look to it. Let me come here, view, full screen mode. So on this case, maybe if you save it as a spread, you don't need to put these buttons like this, right? Because it's like, <clears throat> you're looking for buttons and there is no need. Now remember that I selected rollover. That's why if I come here, it should change automatically. And it should change the position of the windows, correct? And it doesn't look right. So let me get out of it. I'm going to close it. And then I'm going back to InDesign. It didn't work for me the way that I expected. So let's go again, file, export, I'm going to select PDF Interactive, save. I'm going to replace it. But instead of having the, you know, the, the spread, I'm going to select actual size, single page, okay? I'm going to select pages right here at the top and let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to export it again. I'm going to say yes, thank you in design. And let's see, I'm going to select view, full screen mode. So we, these two, we already know that they work. Now let's see page two. Nah, it looks better, right? Now let's go, for example, to this one, page number four. If I come here, it's going to bring me to the previous page, correct? Now, if I click this one, it's going to bring me to the other page. So we have to be careful how we place the buttons because they're going to move depending on how we do the click. I prefer if we select um, on release and tap and on click, they work better because rollover there may be confusing a little bit, right? Because you have to put them just around here. As you can see, right, right here. <laughs> And this one's supposed to take me to the first page, as you can see. Now again, let's click it here. And it's working, it's bringing me to this um, web page. So it really works. As a suggestion, let's go back to InDesign. When you create a button, I'm going to select the ones that we have right here, this one. Try to select on release or click. Because roll over and roll off, they are too sensitive, too, too easy to confuse, right? And this is how you can make a PDF interactive. There, are, there is another way and we can make a form and we're going to learn it in another video. I hope this works for you. See you on the next video. Bye.